from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Tuesday, November the 8th, 2022. U.S. President Joe Biden spoke over the phone last night with the presumed next Prime Minister of the State of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu. The White House wrote to congratulate him on his party's victory and commend Israel's free and fair elections, saying the president reaffirmed the strength of the U.S.-Israel bilateral partnership based on a bedrock of shared democratic values and mutual interests and underscored his unwavering support for Israel's security. The White House said the two leaders agreed to speak again at the conclusion of Israel's government formation process. The Times of Israel cited a Hebrew readout from Netanyahu's office saying that Biden told Netanyahu we're brothers and we'll make history together, with Netanyahu telling Biden that together they would bring about additional historic peace agreements, referring there likely to the Abraham Accords and expanding on them, and telling Biden my commitment to our alliance and our relationship is stronger than ever. Israel's President Isaac Herzog is set to begin meeting with the heads of all parties tomorrow regarding whom he will task with building a coalition for the next government, though it is basically understood that that person will be Netanyahu. Herzog, as we reported to you, is in Egypt today attending the COP27, the UN Conference on Climate Change in Sharm el-Sheikh where yesterday he addressed the international gathering on Israel's role in confronting the crisis. I wish to reiterate the state of Israel's solid commitment as relayed last year in Glasgow to achieving net zero carbon emissions and to transitioning from fossil fuels to renewable energy by 2050. But Israel is prepared to assume far greater responsibility Israel is prepared to lead the effort towards regional climate resilience. I intend to spearhead the development of what I term as renewable Middle East, a regional ecosystem of sustainable peace. Herzog said that in the foreseeable future, he envisioned that solar energy produced in the deserts of the Middle East would be exported to Europe, Asia and Africa. And at the conference today, Israel, Jordan and the United Arab Emirates signed a renewed memorandum of understanding. Israel's regional cooperation minister, Isawi Frej, who signed on behalf of Israel, wrote the memorandum is to continue promoting the electricity for water agreement with Jordan. We are leaving, he wrote, the next government a legacy of cross-border regional cooperation that creates hope for the entire region as countries join together to promote optimal utilization of natural resources. U.S. climate envoy John Kerry was present at the signing as well. And Israel's environmental minister Tamar Zandberg took part today in a regional meeting at the conference led, she wrote, by the presidents of Egypt and Cyprus and with the participation of Greece, Jordan, Iraq, Lebanon, the Palestinian Authority, Bahrain and Oman. We, the countries of the region, she wrote, share the desert, the sea, the warming and the drying. If we share the problems, we can and should share the solutions. The group, the Times of Israel reported, pledged to work together to tackle climate change, which is notable since Israel does not have official diplomatic ties with Iraq or with Lebanon, though Israel and Lebanon did just sign the maritime agreement about 10 days ago. Well, four top Israeli artists were honored in New York City last night at the America Israel Cultural Foundation Celebration and ICA Awards. Presented to dance legend Ido Tadmor, acclaimed pianist Yefim Bronfman, and to leading actors Gal Gadot and Shira Haas. Gadot accepted her award via video, explaining she was sick with the flu, thanking the foundation for supporting Israeli artists, and had this message to convey. Now more than ever, it's important we stand strong as a community and be proud of who we are and in our heritage. I would like to thank you for the support 
in the Jewish community, in the Israeli community. And I wish you all nothing but the very best health and love. Toda Haas accepted her award in person, speaking of the importance of the foundation and of the arts. And I think in a world that sometimes, unfortunately, the value of art and culture can be left behind. Having you and having your support and in the talents and in the Israeli culture is something that I cannot take for granted and I thank you for that. She also thanked her late mother, who passed away just three months ago, for everything she instilled in her, calling her the best person a human being could ever meet. She also taught me without, I think, even being aware of that, how to be a better actress, because she taught me everything I know and want to learn more of empathy and compassion and loving people and other people, no matter how much they're different from you. So I thank you, Ima, and I thank you all to Taraba, and thank you again for this beautiful honor. Taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS for Tuesday, November the 8th. At 7 o'clock, Rabbi Emil Hirsch looks to lessons from Moses and reminds his congregation to look beyond the superficial political circus to the actual people who desire to lead a nation. At 7.30, a look at the famed Turo Synagogue in Newport, Rhode Island. At 8, Rabbi Erez Sherman speaks with U.S. Navy Chaplain Rabbi Arnold Reznikov. At 9, Mark Golub sits down with Hans Fischer on L'Chaim. At 10, Giddy Greenstein speaks on anti-Zionism from Limud, New York, 2014. And coming up next, it's The Der Show. And that's the JBS News Update for Tuesday, November the 8th, 2022. I'm Tisha Bader. Stay healthy, stay well.